Okay, I'm assuming that you have purchased a house or you are uh, considering purchasing a house and this tutorial is to, designed to help you maximize um, the use of your house for the well-being of your family. So the first thing that we want to do is log in to Civic Mirror. And then you are going to click on Home. And then go down to the My Properties box. And here is your house. So you click on your house. Now you may want to set up an asking price. Let's say you want to rent out your house. Maybe you've got a really good cheap deal for renting an apartment and you want to rent out your house for more than what you're paying for rent in an apartment to make to make a profit. So set your asking price for rent. I'm gonna set it at um 150 for rent. Now if you want to sell your house outright, or if you want people to know that you're willing to sell your house outright, then you can put an asking price for your house for the house itself. And I'm going to put the price of the house itself at um, $1,500. But you would want to set it at least for how much you paid for it at auction, if not more than that. Now your house is completely useless until you get it powered. So after you've set up asking price in case you want to rent it out. If you don't want to rent it out at all, um, then the next step you have instead of doing this is simply power it and then occupy it. But there's no point in occupying it until it has power. Otherwise, even if you are living in it, it will not keep your family safe and someone in your family will die. So to get your house powered, you're going to click on this trade button. And then you're going to find out who has the power, who has the EI units. And we go hover over, here's the symbol for the EI hex, or power hex. And then we're going to hover over this number, and it tells us that this fake student Demo 2, now in your country it would be somebody else, but Demo 2 has units of e, uh, energy industry, and they're asking $150 for it. So we're going to go over here and find that student's name, Deno2, begin trade. And then, oh, if you've forgotten what the asking price is, you can always look over here. I would like this EI unit, energy industry unit, and I'm going to give the asking price for it. Okay, and you scroll down and submit trade to Demo2. Now the thing with power uh, especially the power units, but all the units uh, this this is true of, but especially with the EI units, the energy industry units, you need to go and talk to the, them in person, particularly if you're trying to power a house, because houses offer the least amount of good for the country. It gives you good, you personally, but nobody else benefits from your house. And so it tends to be the hardest thing to get powered. So you really want to, it, the, as soon as possible, go over to the person who owns the EI hex and say, hey, I really need you to power my house. Um, and then negotiate that way and just tell them, I've already put the, the, the transaction through, the trade's available, can you please uh, sell me a, uh, an EI unit? It's absolutely essential. Otherwise, chances are they will completely ignore your trade and you won't actually get your house or your mansion powered. <clears throat> so I'm going to go and talk to that person and see if they're willing to power my unit. Okay, so I've talked to them, they've accepted, they put it through, and so then what you need to do is go back to Home, My Properties, click on your house, and then now you can see this blue power button is available. And you click that button and now you have a house that can protect your family. Uh, from the elements. Um, now, if you are unsuccessful, and this is another good reason why it's important to talk to the EI Hex owner personally, if they say, no, I just don't have the units, I can't power your home, or wait, 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 it might, it, at this point, you need to hurry up and get into an apartment. If you can't get your house powered or your mansion powered, Go find somebody who has an apartment complex that is powered and get an apartment so your family is taken care of. That's an urgent issue. Otherwise, you're going to have somebody die in your family. 
So hopefully you got power, but if you didn't, if they said no, or they said, ah, wait till much later, best to be proactive for your family. But we were fortunate. We got our house powered. So then the next step, if you don't do this, again, it won't help you. You actually have to move into the house. So you'll find your name somewhere on this list. Click this Occupy button. Now the house can only house one family, meaning one student. You can't bring anybody else into your house or your mansion. It won't work. Um, so once you're occupied, your family is taken care of, but nobody else can. Now, if you change your mind, you get a, a cheap apartment and you want to make a profit from your house, you could click the leave button or maybe never occupy it. And you could find someone you're willing to invite to live in your country. And here will be a list of students who don't have a home. And you can invite them. Obviously, you'd want to talk to them first. Um, make an arrangement with them. Do they Are they willing to pay you rent? How much are they willing to pay you rent? Have that negotiation in person, verbally. It makes the, the rest of this process a lot easier. And so if you, wanted, if you made a nego negotiation in there, click Invite, and here you have a contract for tenants. You tell them what um, season you need them to pay in. I, I suggest spring. And so then you would put how much you're charging for rent. Rent should be paid, uh, or you can say rent is $200. Um, um, uh, I agree. Oops, I'm going to put that elsewhere. Um, at the beginning of each year, um, landlord shall pay for an, ah, now this is an important thing. It's standard for the landlord to be responsible for, for, um, powering the residents. However, you may make a, an arrangement with the tenant that, Hey, I'll let you live there, but you've got to deal with the power situation each year. You're going to have to go to the EI unit person and talk to them about powering it. Generally, the landlord's expected to do that, but you can uh, make a negotiation with your tenant either way, how, how that's going to be. But if, let's say, if, if um, you are responsible for it, then you probably want to make the rent a little bit higher because you're, you're going to have to pay for that EI unit, and who knows how much that's going to be. So that's something, especially with a house, that's I suggest uh, with a house, you might consider leaving that up to the tenant because it's so hard to power um, <clears throat> a house. Maybe say, okay, because it's so hard to power a house, that's on you, uh, but you don't need to pay me as much rent. Maybe I'll, I'll just charge you $150 in rent each year or even $100 in rent each year. Keep in mind, if you're making them pay for power, then you've got to compete with the apartment complexes, which will uh, will not require their tenants to pay for power. So you've got to keep your prices uh, competitive. However you decide to do that between you and your renter, once you've got the negotiation figured out, you submit that agreement to their renter. And then <clears throat> what you need to do is tell your renter to accept that rental agreement. They'll go in and find that in their trades. Um, tell them to click on this button. They can find that uh, in their trades. And then they need to accept that. And once they've accepted that, then you have one or two choices. You can either create a trade where you are, let's say this is the person that you asked. Uh, to live in your house or that you've agreed to have to live in your house. You are requesting from them the rent money. Let's say you agreed on $150 in rent money or $100 in rent money. Money. You are offering them, and it doesn't show up up here. You won't put that here. You are offering them uh, uh, a place to live in my house. And in exchange for rent. And then you would submit trade to that person that you're making an agreement with. So they need to pay that rent, 
They need to accept that trade. And again, they'll find that there. So anytime you're doing rentals, there's two parts of the process. You need to go through the rental agreement, make sure there's a contract in place, and then you need to request the money from them. Or they can simply send the money to you themselves, either way, but those that's one way of doing it. Okay, so then after you've taken care of your business, whether it's you living in your own house or you renting out your house, then you need to make sure that you take care of all your other family issues. So how you do that is you click on the My Status. Um, the My Status is going to show you whether or not you have a place to live. Now because you're trying to rent out your house, this says you're going to have a death. If you go back and you occupy your house, then you're going to have this taken care of. You also need to buy food. So you're going to do a trade with the person who owns this hex for food. But just buying the food doesn't solve your family problems completely. Once you've gotten the trade, you've gotten the, the, the unit, they've sent you the unit, you've got to actually come back into the My Status section and click Consume Food. It's just like when you buy food and stick it in your refrigerator. You're not going to uh, survive if you don't actually eat that food in your refrigerator. You could starve to death if you don't consume the food in your refrigerator. Same in Civic Mirror. And same with health. You can buy a health um, unit, but if you don't use the health unit, it doesn't help you. You could buy insurance, but if you don't use the insurance, and this will pop up as something you can click once you buy insurance, if you don't use it, it doesn't help you. And units don't save for the next year. So if you don't come in and use them, they're going to go to waste. So remember, this is your first priority, a place to live and, and food to eat. Your second priority is human services. Yours might look different. Yours might say two health units, or it might say two education units. Whatever, whatever your assignment is, that's your next priority. Otherwise, you'll lose well-being points. Third priority, wildcard protection. Getting some insurance, getting security, getting, uh, well, if you've taken care of health up here, you don't necessarily have to do it down here. And then um, luxury goods. If you've taken care of everything and you have some money left over and you have money for next year as well, then you could get technology for your family or education, uh, excuse me, arts and entertainment for your family. And that will help you compete in the game uh, for the highest well being points. Okay, now the last thing I'm going to show you is how to protect yourself in the trading process. Some people are going to try and steal your property in the trading process. So we're going to go up here and click on these trades um, to see an example of someone trying to take advantage of you. Okay, so here we have some incoming trades. We're going to click on this incoming trade. Now here it looks like they're offering you $150 and they're saying it's for rent, but you always need to check over here because not only have they said $150 for rent, but they also are trying to get your house. If you accept this trade, they're going to now own your house. It says items you must give your house. Don't give them your house for $150. Um, and in fact, my experience, every single student judge who has ever um, heard a case where someone said, hey, he didn't ask me for my house, um, he only, and he, he, he said it was for rent, but then he took my house. Um, most judges will say, yes, but you clicked accept trade, so you should have read your contract more carefully. That's, that's what I have seen over and over again. So you really need to be careful to read these trades to make sure nobody takes advantage of you. So um, this person Pay attention to who the student is. They're either incompetent or they're trying to steal from you. Either way, you probably don't want to vote for them for president or for the Senate, uh, for that matter. <clears throat> they, they are either dishonest or incompetent. Either way, are they really going to be the best leader for your government? Then click Reject Trade. Now we're going to go up here and refresh our trades again and see if there's a better trade available. Okay, here's another incoming trade. This person is offering $100 and for rent. If you're satisfied that that's the, the price that you want to rent the house for, then you click Accept Trade. And then you make sure that they are, in fact, inhabiting uh, your house. So that to do that, once you've taken their money for rent, you've got to make sure that you click on your house.
and you make sure that you um, put them into your into your house and having said all that i think we've covered everything best wishes to you your family and your country